Hey, what's up coach? Welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, I'm going to walk through a complete guide on how you can go from zero to 500 or more clients in your local city. You'll see here, like right here on the screen, I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to go through, uh, there's four different slides that will show you piece by piece how to do this and questions you should be asking yourself, things that you should be focusing on. I think this is gonna be one of the most important videos that I ever post here on YouTube. Spent a lot of time going through this and if you have any questions for me, like you don't even need to comment on this video, just text me, all right? My phone number is gonna be in the description. Send me a text there and I would love to see if I can help you. All right, so let's pull this up here and we will get after it. All right, so again, this is the complete guide on how to go from zero to 500 clients in your local city. Now, we're gonna start at square one, all right? So let's say you are starting at zero clients. Nobody knows who you are. Um, you have, let's say you have zero experience, zero experience coaching, uh, you've never run a private training session in your life, or you've never done group training, you've never done camps or clinics. I'm gonna pretend that this is you. So I'm gonna give you some advice. Every day, coaches who have no experience, they, they text me. They'll say, hey, you know, I don't have a degree, I don't have a certification in coaching. Um, can I still start this type of business? The answer is yes. I've said this on other videos, parents don't care about your your playing history or your previous coaching history, they only care if you can help their child. If you can help their child get results, that's what they're paying you for. They're paying you so their child sees a transformation in how they play and how they feel, right? That is very important. So if you don't have any coaching experience, then go get coaching experience. Go volunteer to be a coach at a rec league. Go be like a private school, high school coach. Like do something to give yourself experience. And if you're not, if you don't have any experience getting into this business, coaching, it's gonna be a lot harder. So I'd rather you just go get experience, right? Go get experience coaching, get a lot of reps in, like learn how to communicate with kids. And when you do that, this business becomes a lot easier, especially long-term, right? Cause I don't, I hope you're not thinking short-term when you're watching this video, all right? If you're thinking you're gonna get 500 clients in the next 30 days, you're a fool, all right? I, that's not going to happen for you in the next 30 days, all right? And I'm just being honest with you, <laughs> all right? So if you don't have experience, go get some. Now, here's my advice for you if you already have coaching experience, because I also get texts all the time from coaches who will tell me, hey, I've been coaching for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and I wanna start my business now because I want to make some extra income. And they will always ask questions like this, all right? So they'll ask me, well, how do you start a business? Like, how do you even like, how do you even do that? Well, I mean, starting a business is actually very easy. If like anybody in the world could go to like legalzoom.com, you could start a business, you could start a legal business within 20 minutes. Um, you could go downtown in, in your city and like set up a sole proprietorship within, uh, I remember when I did that back in the day, that took me an hour to set that up, right? So starting a business is not difficult. Like with insurance, like I, coaches ask me this question all the time, with insurance, you can go to K and K Sports, all right? Go, go look at their website, call their number, their website, it's not good, I'm just telling you, their website sucks. It looks like it was designed in the 1920s, <laughs> right? Go to their website, go to Sadler Sports, go check out like, these like legal questions can be Googled, right? Most people are too lazy to just go on Google. So I, I'm not gonna like, with all these questions here, I'm not gonna just give you the answers. I have other videos on this channel that will dive so deep into sales, so deep into marketing, um, and ultimately, that's what we do with coaches that we work with that join our program. We help them with uh, all the things that I'm going to show you on this list. All right. Next is, you know, where can I train? All right. So with this, uh, you know, 
most people just sit around. They, they, they don't actually do research. So I recommend giving yourself 14 days to find a location. And every single day for an hour per day, you're either on the phone with people that have gyms or they have fields or whatever, like whatever sport you're in. And if you spend an hour a day for 14 days, you will find a location in under 14 days. That is a fact. I have seen it happen at this point hundreds of times with coaches that I work with. And if you don't have a sense of urgency with that, then you're not going to have the confidence to start marketing. Because if you don't have a location, you cannot run this business. And that doesn't mean you need to have like your own gym or or your your own location that you're buying. I'm not saying that. Like you could do a lot of things starting off at a local park. Like if, if you don't have any money to invest in the business, <clears throat> you start a local park. All right. Go to a high school gym. Go to a church. Like you need to have something. Something that works at the beginning. All right. And I will talk about your own location later on. All right. And I would also, because like this is a very confusing thing for, for some coaches, they think that they should just um, either lease out or buy their own location from day one. If you don't have clients, you should not be doing that, right? You should not be doing that. You should learn how to get clients first so you have revenue that's coming in, all right? Because if you don't have consistent revenue coming in, if you go get a location, that is going to, that is going to crush you financially, all right? And then either A, you have the sense of urgency to go get clients at that point, or B, you shut down. I... I talk to a lot of people who are an option B there, all right? And this is why I want to create this video, okay? So need to have a location, somewhere that is consistent to be able to train kids at. Next is marketing. You know, how do I get clients? This is a question you should be asking yourself, right? If you're not asking yourself that, then you're not going to make money. You're not going to be able to impact and work, work with kids at all. So think about, like, what can I do today? to market myself so I can get clients. There's a million different ways to do that, right? And again, I have other videos on this channel that have been watched thousands of times that, about marketing, and you can go watch some of those videos. That's why I would recommend subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet, right? Because I go deep into this, and I do this every single day, five days a week, with coaches that I work with on a personal level, right? And they, I help them get more clients. That's part of what we do. Um, next, which is what should I offer my program? This is a basic question that a lot of coaches miss because when they try to sell their program at the beginning, they're just thinking they're doing lessons and they're selling session by session. I will tell you when you get to the fourth slide, you cannot operate your business. If you do lesson by lesson, it's too unpredictable. It puts the financial control of your business in your client's hands, not in your hands. Okay. So what should you include in your program? That is something that you need to go deep into. All right. Because you don't want to start your business and be competing against everybody else in your city who's doing the exact same thing. All right. You need to be different. So we need to understand what is your offer? What, what is included in your program? All right. Next, which is sales. Every I, I get this text, I am not kidding, probably 10 times per week. Ben, how much should I charge? You know, I'm just starting. Should I charge this? And here's the thing. When I started my, my training business, before I was like a legal business, I was, I was training kids for free to get experience. See, the, the thing is most coaches, won't, they won't be willing to do that. <laughs> they they, they want to just start off charging and you should start off charging but you have to be confident with your price. I wasn't confident with my price when I started. That's why I did it for free. I did it to get results. And once I saw results, I started charging, all right? And if you don't know my, my story, I started charging like $15 for 90 minute sessions. Like most coaches would laugh if they, if they hear that. They'd be like, I would never do that. Well, I did that again because I wasn't confident with my pricing. So with you, if you're not confident with your pricing, start with something. Start with something and start collecting money, all right? And again, I started doing things per session. Like if you've watched any of my videos, you know it does not work that way, especially long-term. And, and if you start off that way and you change later on, that's fine, right? But you need to, to charge something, okay? You need to charge something. So 
if you are like so unclear on how much you should charge, then what I want you to do is take a step back and say, well, if I was a parent, how much would I pay for this? And then whatever that number is, that's what you should charge. All right, it's the easiest way to figure it out. And don't ask me how much you should charge. I don't know. I don't know what's in your program. I don't know what your experience is like. Like, if you just text me that, it's you're asking the wrong person. You should be asking yourself that, right? Next, uh, which is effort, right? Now, this is one of those things. When I think of, of effort, most people in this industry are lazy. And I'm, I'm just being very straight up. And I talk to coaches every single day. Most coaches won't put in the effort at the beginning stages because they're hesitant. They are distracted. They are thinking about other types of businesses. They're watching all of these webinars on Facebook and Instagram and, and YouTube. And they're getting sucked into this entrepreneurial like mindset of like doing all of these like like things that don't even matter right and effort in my mind is it is what can i do daily to be known in my city so if no one knows who you are you need to put yourself out on the map it's as simple as that you, you can't just like hide behind social media or make a couple of posts on social media and expect the all of the parents to be like oh yeah we need to train with you like <clears throat> it doesn't work that way you need to learn how to be proactive which is something you should be doing daily at the beginning so is that reaching out to <clears throat> your old high school coach and, and establishing connections with the current high school team is that uh linking up with the local ymca is that uh linking up with another local trainer and helping them run a clinic and getting more experience it like there's so many different things that you can do to be known in your city. Social media is one of those things, but it's also not one of those things. There's people that don't know how to use social media, so they're wasting time, right? So what are you doing to be known locally, all right? Do parents even know who you are? If they don't know who you are, they will not buy. And the only way they will buy is if they know, like, and trust you, period. They have to know, like, and trust you. And I will tell you, I'm just gonna say this flat out. There are people that think you can just run a Facebook ad and like put people into a funnel and just get them to become a client like this. The, th the thing is there's, there's going to be a, a phase and a period of time where these people have to trust you before they buy. Could you run Facebook ads? Absolutely. But a lot of coaches think, well, I'm gonna go run this Facebook ad and, and if it brings in 100 leads over the next 30 days, like it's going to give me 50 clients. Like it's probably not gonna work as well as what I'm, what I'm just saying uh, because you probably don't have all the systems and, and things dialed in. You probably don't have a sales script. You probably don't know what your offer is. Like those are things that, again, are bright, shiny objects at the beginning that you do not need to focus on. Don't need to focus on ads at the beginning. Like you need to focus on getting your name out there, meeting people, because this whole business revolves around two things. It's relationships. If you have a solid relationship with the parents and the, and the child, they're gonna stay with you. Like, why would they, why would they leave your program if they like you and, and they see the value of your program? The second thing is sales. Right. So the only way to get good at sales is if you actually open your mouth, you start talking to people. Right. And this is why I'm very resistant towards just trying to do stuff on social media. Right. And I will tell you, like, I got nothing to hide. I, on social media, if you scroll around in the sport that you're in and you see what people are doing, most people are, have absolutely no idea what they're doing. And, and most coaches are do, all doing the same thing. The marketing on social media is, it's it's more about me, me, me. The, the, the coaches are showing what they're doing. They're not posting results of the kids that they work with, all right? And you gotta remember who's watching your stuff on social media, okay? Now, I could talk about that for like 10 hours, all right? So I'm not gonna get into that now. Um, so what are you doing daily to be known in your city? When you do this, you should be able to get 20 clients 
simple. Like when, when you figure these things out, all right? Next, now we're at the stage of 21 to 50 clients. Now, the questions that you ask yourself at this point are different, all right? And these are questions you could ask yourself at the beginning stage, but most people don't. Most people aren't even thinking about this, right? And I know this because I talk to coaches that have 70 to 100 clients and when we when I ask them these types of questions, they haven't figured that out yet. All right. And again, this is why like the program that we have, we we solve these problems, everything that I'm about to show you and even on the next slide. Um, that's our goal. So the first problem is, are my clients consistent in my program and how can I charge more? So your self worth goes up a little bit when you get to this level because you're like, all right, I got income coming in. I have clients, but the biggest problem that I see that coaches struggle with is the clients that are in the program are canceling last second, not showing up on time, paying late, not paying, owing money, paying on 5,000 different payment systems, Venmo, Cash App, Cash, Check, PayPal. Like there's too many, too many different moving pieces going on and there's a lack of organization and typically that leads to clients not coming every week and clients not being fully committed. I see this every single day. This is something that we handle every single day. All right. And I know this is a massive problem that you might be facing right now if you're watching this video. And you could be facing that if you have between zero and 20 clients. But that is something that has to change. If you want to go from 20 to 50 and 50 to 500, like, you have to be able to get that down, and if you don't have the right foundation, your business will crumble, and, and you'll have some months where you're, you're crushing. Like, you might have some months in the summer where you do great, and then when you get to the fall, your business just collapses, All right? And I will show things on the next slide that will, that will like, talk more about that, All right? Uh, another question, which is, how can I do this full-time with financial security, All right? A lot of coaches, are, are skeptical about that when they get to this stage they're like well can i really do this and you know in order for me to do this full time because like they probably still have a job at this point like what what do i need to do to make sure i have the financial security to either pay off debt or pay off my bills um like health insurance like i mean there's, there's bills that you're going to have to pay. And like when you leave your job, they're not going to keep paying for your, your health insurance. They're not going to keep giving you like uh, 401k. Like that, all that goes away when you have your own business and you're not still getting paid by, uh, by a boss, right? Because you, now you're the boss, all right? Again, this is something that a, a lot of coaches think about and they get hesitant because they don't, want to leave the comfort of someone else essentially providing the money to pay off the bills and, and pay off the security. And I will tell you, right, my mindset is very different. It is very simple, really, to be honest. It is, if I'm going to be the boss, I don't need somebody to pay off my health insurance. I don't need someone to give me security because if I'm relying on them, then I will never ever fully branch out on my own to do this full time. All right. Cause then I'm just relying on someone else. And if I'm relying on someone else and that makes me comfortable, like the only way to, to get rid of that is by fully jumping into this business. Like when you're ready to, right. It is not, jumping into this business when you have zero clients and, and doing it full time. I'm not saying that, that <clears throat> this is set up to where you should be very smart and conservative with how you think about moving into this business. I'm not trying to convince you to move into this business um, because most people, what they do is they think about it and they're like, man, I'm going to have to make, you know, this much in order to pay off this. And the way I look at it, it's like, well, that might just be like one more client. Or that might just be like, let's let's raise the pricing for, for new clients. That are, now they're paying this and we get one new client. That's that's going to pay off the like this bill or, or this health insurance or whatever, whatever it costs us. 
all right so <clears throat> this next one is probably the the most important on this slide which is how many clients do i need to pay x amount per month now i will tell you one of the biggest issues that coaches have is organization with money and i'll tell you a story when we get to the money piece at, at the bottom here all right but you should be asking yourself like and you should have a spreadsheet like here's how many clients i want here's how many i have and here's how much they're paying if you don't have that dialed in like you could have 30 clients right now but like what if only 10 of them are paying well you don't have 30 clients i i, I don't count that as 30 clients i count that as 10 clients and what if those 10 clients aren't paying you every single month? What if they just pay you once every three weeks when they see you and they're not coming every week, All right? Well, those aren't even clients, okay? So this is why you have to treat your business like an actual business, right? I can't go to the Apple store and just grab one of their computers and say, hey, let me pay you back or like, let, let, let me do this in six months. No, like they're a business. They're, they're successful. You need to treat this like a successful business. Even if you have like 10 clients or, or 20 clients, like you, you need to treat it like a successful business because when you do that, your standards are higher. And I'll talk about standards on the last slide too. All right. Next, it is execution. Okay. If you are distracted in this phase, you're not going to make it. I will tell you, you, you might just stay the same and your business, like maybe, maybe some months you add like three or four clients and, but you lose like five or six and it's like this up and down cycle that never changes. I will tell you it's because of execution. It's because either you're afraid to make changes that should be made or you're unaware of those changes that should be made and you're not really seeing why are these people leaving? Why am I not getting referrals? Why are they late? Like <clears throat> there, are, there are so many little details to this business and if you're not executing at this stage here, like you're, you won't grow beyond the point that you're at right now. Like you might get new clients, but I care about are the clients that you're currently training, are they continuing with uh, continuing in your program? That to me is more important, right? It is not about, oh, well, you know, today, today I added three new clients and last month I added 10 new, but like if you're not keeping track of everything, right, it, you're, not go you're not going to last in this business. And when I say last, I'm talking about doing it for, for a long time. I've had my business for, for over a decade, right? So I have a decade's worth of experience, more than that at this point, of being self-employed. And I will tell you, like, the months that I spent not executing, that's when my business was suffering, all right? So you have to execute and you have to be consistent. And that comes down to just asking yourself this question. Do I follow through with what I say I'm gonna do? Like, and I have a, a video, I think it's been already posted on YouTube, where the story about how a coach failed to show up to one of his sessions and, and I scooped up his clients and, and made 60 grand over the next four years because those clients were upset with that guy and they wanted someone real and they wanted someone consistent. All right, so you, you can't just execute in your business. You have to be an executor in your personal life. And those two things pair up. All right, you can't you can't be one way in your personal life and then one way in your business. It's you have to have the same habits, and I talk about that on the next slide. Okay, next, which is referrals. Are my clients seeing results and referring me to new customers? This should have been higher up on the slide, um, but you got to ask yourself: like, am I even asking my clients for referrals? Like, do I do I ask them? Do I have phone calls with my clients? Am I um, Am I getting on to them about getting me new customers? Like, are they even introducing me to anyone else? And if not, why not? Like, what am I doing as a business owner that's preventing me from getting referrals? Okay, if you do not get referrals right now, like, that is probably one of the easiest ways to get new clients. And there are so many different little ways to get referrals. And if that's a consistent thing, you, every month you should be growing your business. Like, there's zero excuse. 
to grow your business every month. If you if you have a referral system in place, all right. And if you want to learn more about that, jump on a call with me, and I'd, I'd love to talk with you. All right. Next, it is money. All right. And again, this kind of goes back to <clears throat> where I talk about sales. How many clients do I need to pay X amount per month to do this full time? All right. Now here, this pairs up with it perfectly, which is if. And I'll just use this example. If 100, or sorry, if 20 clients are in my program, am I making uh, $6,000? All right, so I'm using the equation, if 20 people are in my program <clears throat> and each client's paying $300 per month, all right, am I actually making 6K? Now, I will tell you, if you are using Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, Cash, checks if i put you up to a lie detector and you're using like two out of those five things you won't be able to give me an honest answer if you're making that much because i know what you're probably doing you're probably getting that cash or that money and you're just going to spend it right and i will tell you this is what amateurs do amateurs take the money from clients and they go use it they'll go pay for gas and i will tell you long term not going to be able to do that like you can't operate that way because what if someone shows up to your session and they don't have a cash are you going to go to their house and go get it like how are you going to collect the money um or what if someone writes you a bad check that's happened to me before i, I had a client write me a bad check for for twenty five hundred dollars never saw that money again All right so and again there, there's so many little things that you have to get dialed in but this piece right here is going to elevate you to the next level which is if and i'm using the example of 300 dollars per month you don't have to be charging 300 dollars per month all right but if 20 clients are my program am i making six thousand dollars per month every month now if the answer is no then we have a systems problem all right if the answer is yes then you're probably on top of your finances i will tell you i know some great coaches out there that are out of business right now. You know why? Because they were not on top of their finances. They were not on top of their clients. They did not have systems in place. They did not have proper billing structure uh, set up. And they're great coaches. And it's a shame because they could be helping a lot of kids right now. But guess what? They didn't want to change. And they didn't want to learn. They didn't want to become organized. That was the roadblock. It was themselves. It was, it was not their ability to coach. I know some amazing coaches that are out of business right now. Like there's, I, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into the story because I, I know someone personally who's just an incredible coach in the same sport that I'm in, uh, and you know because he did not have these things set up, uh, he's struggling, he's struggling bad, and he's an amazing coach, amazing coach, uh, and he's probably out of business at this point, and it's sad because he could be helping a lot of kids. But people, if you're stubborn, if you're not willing to make the changes, then you're not going to change your business. All right, that's as simple as that. All right, it's as simple as that. Okay, now, and lastly, I'm gonna show you this story. So a couple weeks ago, I got a uh, email from a coach. He had 100, he, he told me, he said, Ben, I have 100 clients right now in my program. I'm really struggling in my business. And without even me talking to him, I already knew that this was the problem. It, it was lack of organization. It is clients not c being committed. It is clients not paying monthly or uh, upfront for a year or upfront for six months. Like I already knew, I already knew what this dude smelled like before <laughs> before we even had our first call. Because I saw his email, I was like, okay, well, you know. Let's see, let's, let's chat with this guy and, and let's under, better understand what's going on. So we get on the call and he's, he says he has 100 clients and like roughly he makes around $1,000. Some, some months he'll make more, some months he'll make less. And his whole business was, was set up through lessons where it's like, you know, he'll send out a text message on Sunday night saying, hey guys, we have this, this many spots open and, and I know there's there's hundreds of coaches who watch this video that operate this way. So like if, if you're this way, you're gonna have to change. 
if you want to if you want to do bigger things in your business, you can't do it this way. All right. And he would send out texts. Everyone would respond and be like, yeah, we can go at this time. Or they'd be like, no, we can't go this week. So he was relying on people texting him back to uh, say they're coming to the sessions. But guess what? A lot of people were like, yeah, we'll take Thursday at 4. But here's what happened. Wednesday at, at 10 o'clock p.m., they would text him, hey, we can't make it tomorrow. Sorry. Can we see you next week? So guess what? This week he didn't get paid. And he just lost that hour of time that he can't give, probably can't give back to someone else unless he's up at 10 o'clock at night texting parents, like, which is not a good idea. So his scheduling was bonkers. It was off, way off. Right? And again, he's texting 100 people and a small group of those people would actually see him every week. So I asked him, I go, do you think you have 100 clients? And he said, yes. I go, well, then why aren't they all paying every month? And he just froze. We were talking on Zoom. He froze and he didn't know what to say. I was like, buddy, you don't have 100 clients. You don't. I was like, you probably have maybe 10 committed people you see per week. And I was like, right now, and, and, and I asked him, like, how much he charges per session? And he charges, like, typically 20 to $25 per session, All right? Again, I think he could be charging a lot more, but that's, that's his thing that he can change. And I also think he shouldn't be doing it per session <clears throat> because that's what's killing him right now. Parents, parents blocking time, saying they're going to be there and then not showing up. And, and then him just having a schedule that's, that changes every single week. It's, it, his schedule is not consistent. And that's, that's a problem he could fix. All right. So roughly he's making around a thousand dollars per month. And I go, I go, you're sitting on a $10,000 per month business right now. If you made one change and he was like, what I go. I go, your clients pay $100 per month right now if they see you every week, right? And he was like, well, yeah, it's 25 per session. I was like, well, yeah, there's four weeks in a month. So if you take $25 times four, that's $100 per month. I was like, you need to switch your, your billing to monthly and we need to get these kids into groups. And, and we need to get people more committed. If we get them more committed, you're, you're going to be making $10,000 per month pretty quickly. And he was like, oh my gosh, I didn't see it that way. And this is why, you know, if he was more organized, he wouldn't have been on the call with me. Okay. And I will tell you, a lot of coaches make this mistake. They say, I have this many clients, but those aren't true clients. A true client in my mind is someone who's with you for a long period of time. You're never talking about money. You're talking about money one time. After that, it's done. You're not collecting money like a drug dealer at the part. You're not getting paid Venmo, Cash App, PayPal. Like they're not like sending you money on Western Union. Like no, it, this is set up to where you have like one billing system to operate everything from, and there's automatic recurring billing. All right, too many coaches make this mistake. And again, like this dude who has a hundred clients, he he is on the verge of going out of business because of how he's operating. It has nothing to do with how he coaches. His, he, he's a good coach. How he operates is preventing him from going to the next level. And, and I, t I told him, I go, dude, you're losing $9,000 every single month right now because you won't change this. I go, you're sacrificing over $100,000 per year because you're doing it this way. Like, are you comfortable knowing that? He's like, no. And he was like, I know I need to change. I was like, cool, let's, let's work together. Like, uh, that's, that's what we're going to do. All right, so <clears throat> he, he's going to be in the process of making these changes. And, and I would say within the next 90 days, he, he will probably be going from like $1,000 a month, probably to like six or $7,000 per month. And, and when he has that foundation, then he's going to be able to absolutely crush it because he's gonna end up getting rid of customers that are not a good fit, which is something I'm about to talk about, all right? So if you're doing anywhere between 21 to 50 clients, these are the typical problems, all right? I know this is a long video, I got one more slide, and uh, this, is, 
This is the big daddy right here. <laughs> and these are the things I have learned through experience. All right. There's a lot here. There, there are so many different things that I have learned about all of these here. And you know what? Because this is a long video, I'm going to go through these one by one and just give a quick thought about each one. Some I'm going to go deeper into. But if you want to go from like 50 to 500, all right? And if you don't even believe that you could have 500 clients in your in your business, you're not thinking long term. Like I'm in a conversation with someone right now on Instagram. It's a girl uh, who's a soccer trainer. She has 630 clients that see her every single week. All right, imagine that. Imagine you having 630 clients every single week. Now, do you think she's training all those kids? No, she's got coaches. All right, she had to go through like the starting process and growing process. Um, yeah, 600, uh, it was either 620 or 630 clients per week. <clears throat> I talked with a guy the other day. He, he's trained uh, over 40,000 kids since 2004. Why? Well, he's a great coach, probably has great systems, has had people in place that were doing the sessions. So, so what, the 500 is not this inflated number, right? I don't want you to look at that and be overwhelmed, right? But you don't need to think about 500 right now. Like, but I'm showing all the things that are required to not only just have a successful business, but to stay in this long term where you become the CEO. Because guess what? You could be... 25 watching this video, 35 watching this video, 45, 55, does not matter how what your age is, you're not gonna be able to coach forever. And you're going to have to leverage other people's time. You need to have a team in place. Like if you wanna pull yourself out of the business in the future, because like you will, you, you'll need to. If, if you want to have hundreds of clients, all right? Because how are you gonna train hundreds of clients every week? That's that's gonna be physically impossible for you and you'll never see your family and you're gonna be stuck coaching for the rest of your life, which I love coaching, coaching's great, but I don't wanna be out of the field 24 hours a day. That's, that's, that's gonna ruin me, <laughs> all right? So here's the problems. First is becoming a long-term thinker. Most people think just about today, this week, this year. They're not thinking five, 10, 20, years from now they're not thinking about building they're thinking about well this is how it is right now so right now everything's going okay they're not planting they're not planting seeds right and i i don't want to use myself as an example here because like i've worked with at this point hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of coaches from all over the world but i am going to use myself as the example here like i thought very long term when i started this youtube channel at the beginning, nobody watched my videos. Like, no one was texting me. Every single day now, like, people are texting me. People are enrolling into our program. We've got hundreds of conversations going on right now on Instagram. Like, I thought long, long term, all right, I'm still nowhere, nowhere where I want to be, all right? So I've, I still strive for a lot more, right? Because I think 10, 20, 30 years from now, I'm not thinking about just today, but today we need to plant seeds for the future. And if you don't think long term, I promise you, your business will not survive. And when COVID happened, I saw this. Coaches that, coaches that weren't thinking long term, right when COVID hit, they quit. Like there were thousands of people in the United States when COVID hit where they just quit. They didn't like think about trying to go online during that time. They weren't thinking, of, they were thinking about themselves. They weren't thinking about their clients. And you know what? I'm going to freaking say it here. A lot of coaches gave up on kids and those kids are screwed up now because they did not have a mentor during that time. And you know what? If you watch this video and you quit during that time, don't ever reach out to me. <laughs> All right. Because I like to work with winners. I like to work with people who actually genuinely care about kids. And a lot of coaches that were selfish during that time, they quit. And guess what? They'll never get back into the business because if something like that have ever happens again, they'll just bounce back out. This is why I think it's such an opportune time for winners 
and champions, champion mindset to thrive in this business over the next X amount of year, you know, 20, 30 years. Like sports is just going to get bigger. All right. So got to be a long term thinker. If you think short term, like you're, you're that way in every aspect of your life. And that's going to hurt you from growing your business because you're not thinking long term. You're making decisions too quickly. All right. You need to think long term. All right. Next is <clears throat> changing your personal habits to become a successful human being. You know, this is a just a straight up type of thing. <laughs> most people that say they want to make, and I'm just going to use this example because like it's popular. Most people want to make 10K a month, right? They think if they make 10K a month, they'll be successful. And they think that their life is going to drastically change. But here's the reality. Most people who say that, they, they are not living in alignment with someone who is making $10,000 per month. They're not waking up early. They're not, uh, they're, they don't have a routine. Like they, they don't take it serious. So someone who is making 10K a month or 20K a month, I talked with someone the other day who's making 150K a month. Right? You think that guy is uh, like going out drinking on Friday and Saturday nights? Absolutely not. Like you think he's sleeping until noon every day? No. Like that dude's habits are dialed in, all right? Dialed in. So the, the income that you want to make is going to come down to your personal habits. Because let's say you do make 10K a month, but you're really irresponsible with money. Well, you're just going to blow it. And if you do that, guess what? I mean, whose fault is that? That's your fault. And now you're going to have to go work even harder next month to get the money back. All right. So this is why I'm a big believer in being frugal with your money. And you should be ideally investing the money that you make, not spending it on personal habits, like things that are dumb, that, that don't give you any satisfaction. And again, I've, I've seen personally, I have seen people change their personal habits over the last five, six years since I've started consulting. And the types of people that are really successful that I've worked with, a lot of it at the end of the day has to do with how they have matured and how they have developed as a human. All of the business stuff, all of the advice, all the tactics, that works for someone who has better habits, right? Because like, let's say, let, let me give you this example. Let's say I was like, I was telling you to go create a video every day for 30 days and put yourself out there on Facebook. Like, if you don't have the discipline to wake up early and, and work on what you're going to say and, and get things set up and be consistent, like you'll never do it. You'll never do it. But if, if you have the personal habits to become a champion in this business and to be a champion, you're just going to get it done. All right. But again, most people say they want to make 10K a month or 20K. Like they think their life is just going to magically change when they get there. It won't. I, I, I can tell you that it won't. Uh, and the thing is that they don't have the personal habits that are in alignment with, with being successful, right? And that is something you have to like rewire your brain. And I could, I could talk to you about that. But the thing is like, if you lived with me for a week, you, you think I'm the most boring human being on the planet. And that's cool. Cause like that works for me. I'm focused, I'm dialed in, I get my stuff done, I provide for, for my wife and, and, and what we're doing. Like, and I had to change my personal habits a lot, right? And I won't go into those details here because I already have a lot of other videos where I've talked about that sort of stuff, all right? Uh, now, I'm gonna go through these a little bit faster because like we're already on 45 minutes. <laughs> uh, next is location. So this is either you growing and expanding into a new location or getting into a new lease, or buying a location. Like there are a lot of different things here. And if you wanna have more clients, you probably need more space. All right, next is accounting. Coaches that are irresponsible with money and they're not accounting and they don't have a CPA, like they're gonna end up paying more money in taxes and they're gonna probably uh, run into more problems. Like my CPA costs like, I think on average, like $750 per year, 
Like the amount of time that that saves me and my wife, is, it's amazing, <laughs> right? And uh, yours could be a lot more, it could be less, but you need to have that in place. Money management. So when, when clients pay, what are you doing with the money? Where is it going? Is it going into your pocket? Is it going into an account? Like, is, are you moving some of that into a tax savings? Like, what, what are you doing with the business income? All right. Next is investing. I'm not going to really get into that, but like investing into other assets um, that are away from your business or reinvesting the money back into your business. Uh, retention. Like keeping clients for a long period of time. Like and I'm, when I say long period of time, I'm talking like beyond two years. Like one of the kids that I work with right now, his name's Hunter. I've known Hunter since he was like 10 years old. The kid is 18. He's about to graduate high school. I've known him for eight years. All right. Most coaches can't hang on to kids for more than eight minutes. <laughs> all right. So again, that is something re retaining clients is how you have consistent income, all right? And that's gonna come down really to the next thing, which is leadership. So leadership in all areas, that is leadership with the kids that you train and, and the coaches that work for you, um, if you have assistant coaches. Um, and being, being someone, like I said at the beginning, being someone who is true to the word, all right? Next is accountability. So keeping kids accountable. I think the easiest way to do that is if you are an accountable uh, human being yourself. Next, predictable sales cycle. So you know that every single time you speak with someone over X amount of period of days, you know that they're either going to buy or you're going to like downgrade them, them into something else. So it's predictable. It's not this like, oh, they're gonna call me when I'm at Burger King ordering a like chicken nuggets and I'm doing the sales call here. That's not going to work. Like, if you want to separate yourself and, and and get a lot of clients in this business, you have to run a professional organization, all right? <clears throat> and pre a predictable sales cycle is huge. Onboarding process. So, how do you onboard people? Are they just showing up? Are they showing up to a free session, or is there like a paid process? Is there an evaluation session? Again, these are little details. Premium pricing. So, this is what ultimately what we specialize in our program. For people that end up making this change, like ideally they're charging between 2K to 5K up front. And if you don't, if you're watching this and, and you haven't seen the stuff that we post on Instagram, then you probably don't believe what I'm saying. But go follow me on Instagram and you'll see daily I post stuff like that with the coaches that we work with. It's very possible, very doable. Um, probably not gonna, that, that's not gonna work from day one if you don't have any clients, but. That can happen uh, absolutely if you have the right thing set up, all right? So premium pricing is huge. That is absolutely massive. So next is operations. So how you manage everything, scheduling, staying on top of that, having a good system in place, hiring top talent to scale. So this is the thing. If you wanna have a lot of clients in your program, you need to hire the right people. So that is a skill. You, you can't you can't just find some Joe Schmo off the, you know, on the corner uh, to hire for this type of business. And if you hire the wrong person, that's going to kill you because it's your business. You're, 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 you're a part of everything. You're a part of every good decision and bad decision that happens in a business. All right. Firing uncommitted clients. This is a big one. So. Normally when coaches have more clients, they're, they're, they're willing to get rid of people that aren't committed because they're not meeting the coaches or the program's standards. So if you have low standards, you will get crappy clients and there's no way around it. If, if you have low or no standards, I've talked about this in other videos, you won't get high quality clients. And if you're not getting high quality clients, I will tell you right now, it's probably because you're not making high quality decisions in your personal life. That's just straight up. Like if, cause let's say your standards are so high as a, as a human being. And then you have these clients that are like late, not paying, disrespectful, not valuing your time. There, that, there is a mismatch that to me doesn't make sense. And normally when someone has low standards, they attract those types of clients. If you have high standards in your personal life, that needs to carry into your business. Right. And this is why I said changing personal habits to become a successful human being is at the top of this list. All right. 
uh, firing assistant coaches. So if, if you have uh, coaches that aren't listening, they're not following through, they're irresponsible, well, guess what? That's on you. You, you are responsible for, for bringing that person to your life. And you should fire them. You should do that today. Like, for real. Do it today. Uh, or you should be coaching them on how to be better. Next is back-end organization. So uh, I could make another video just talking about this. Um, that's not really relevant unless you have between like 100 and 500 clients type of thing. Um, but that's that becomes very big. And again, it's the little details in this business that take you a long way. Like, and you'd be surprised. Like, I've seen some people who have like 50 clients, for example. And when they make like two or three little changes their business is already more successful for like the next 12 months because they made those little changes on the back end of their business right next is precision billing so this means one payment system one way of paying and you have options where parents can pay up front which is the thing that we teach coaches how to do or we get them on quarterly billing or half today, half this coming month or uh, monthly subscriptions. And you know what? There, there are people that I've seen that are in the sports industry or they say they are and I don't know if they actually are, uh, but they, they always talk about how you should, should, you should only charge like $100 per month. I'll tell you. If you have 500 clients that are paying $100 per month, like, sure, you could have, on paper, you're making a lot of revenue. But if we do the math, all right, 500 times 100, that's 50K per month, right? Most people on the planet would rip their arm off to make 50K per month. But they're not thinking about the R word, which is, revenue right if you're making 50k in revenue right and you have 500 clients right the profit margin is actually going to be very small and that's because at that point i mean you've you have to have a a location you have to have a a bunch of people working for you so like your profit margin will be smaller and that's because of what you're charging so i'm a believer you should be charging a premium if, if you are a leader in your community and you have a great program and you're great at what you do, you should charge more than every single other coach in your area. And, it, and I'm not saying it's because you deserve it. I'm saying it because you are a specialist, right? You're a specialist. You're not someone who's just showing up to the field or showing up to the court, right, at this level. You are someone who solves a specific problem. And I would rather you, I mean, when I just look at that number, charging $100 per month, that's peanuts compared to someone who's charging uh, two or $300 per month that has a better service. So this is why I look at it. A lot of it comes down to what is the problem that you're solving in retention. And when you have that dialed in and you're willing to charge more, then your profit margin goes way up, right? Way up. And I don't like the $100 per month model unless you are an area where like that's what people can afford. Um, I, I've seen people that live in low income areas and I'm making a video about this on our channel um, that charge way more than $100 per month. So like I don't like that model. I, I don't uh, I don't like it, especially if you're, you're thinking about doing this long term. OK, um, where was I? All right. Contracts for committed clients. So that's something that we address in our program. A lot of these things we address in our program. Um, and really, that's to get people committed. It's, we either get them committed or we they're on the fence and we throw them off to the other side of the fence where they don't get to come into, into the program, <laughs> right? That's as simple, like, I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible. That's what it is. It gets people committed or it gets people to decommit and not come into the program. And the thing is, if you're putting effort and time trying to work with kids, why would you wanna work with someone who's not committed to you? Like, what's the point? If they come see you for a week or a month and they drop out, did, did you, do you think you actually made an impact on their life? And you think you actually made a difference in, in how they play? No, no, you didn't. It, it's about getting them to be committed, All right? Next is marketing 
to funnel in new prospects daily. So this goes back to kind of what we talked about on the first slide, the, the basics, the fundamentals. What are you doing to draw in new leads daily? Who are you connecting with? How are you getting these calls? Uh, where are these calls coming from? What are you doing consistent throughout the week that is <clears throat> driving new leads towards your business? And here's the thing, you're either doing something or you're doing nothing. Like most people do nothing. And you know why? Because I, I, I really do feel like at the end of the day, and I'm just gonna say this, most people are afraid to actually be successful because they're not willing to change their personal habits. Like there are coaches that would rather spend three or four days on Instagram and make 5K a month than someone who's making 25K a month not, not scrolling around on Instagram. I, I see it. I see it all the time. Like one of the coaches I work with right now that, uh, like I'm not going to say his name because like I know everyone's going to try to hit him up, but he, he did around 500K this year, right? Spends very, like he spends zero time on Instagram. Zero, <laughs> right? He has, he, he has t a team of people who will post things. Like he's not in there. He's not in there looking at what other people are doing. He's dialed in on his business and he's making his business better every month. That's see, that's the difference. He was he was he did not like his personal habits were already dialed in to where he didn't care about social media. He he cares about having a successful business. It's a big difference. All right. Uh, next, maximizing time per session. So this is another big detail. Like a lot of coaches that do a lot of one-on-one -on -one training, you can scale a business with one-on-one -on -one training, but you have to have coaches around you and you have to have a team like i know a couple guys who have uh it's like right around 100 to 150 clients total and it's all one-on-one -on -one training and it works but they have to have guys that are really committed that are doing those sessions like they have to have a team like i said i recommend doing group training i mean you you save so much more time. You're able to impact so many more kids. And you're out, you're able to have more clients, more customers, and you could go to a model where you're training like anywhere between like six to twelve kids. There's some coaches I work with that have like thirty kids in group sessions. It, it depends on on the model of, of how you're wanting to train kids. Uh, next is specializing more. So this this is like you become a specialist, and it should get to the point where at this at this range where when when parents are even thinking about oh you know my son is struggling with this it should be as simple as if they talk to another parent that other parent already knows about you like because you already have that level of influence on the thing that you specialize in right and i'm not going to say this to brag i'm saying this because it's real in 2009 like right around when I started my business, there was another guy in my area. He had a great business. The biggest problem though is that he had, that I spotted, is he had too many kids at his sessions. He had a great business. He had a lot like, he was making probably ten to $15,000 per month. Easy. And everything was done in groups. Great coach. He's actually a pro coach right now, this guy. Great coach good business. The thing that he lacked though, all right, is he wasn't really specializing. And I remember going out and watching his sessions because like I was stalking him. I was like, what is this guy doing? Where is he getting these kids? And I, I invested my time and my energy to learn. And again, I knew nothing about business when I started my business, but I wanted to go see what this guy was doing. He was the only person in town that was doing any sort of soccer training. And I remember going to watch his sessions and I took out my, my notepad and I was writing all the things down that he was doing good. And then on the next page, I wrote all the things down that I thought he could be doing better. And I looked at that page for like a week and I was like, I need to offer something better than this dude. Like, and if, if I can do that, I can cut into this market and I can take this market. Like that's, that's exactly how I was thinking. This was like when I, when I was looking to create something unique and something that was specialized. 
And so what I did was I, I looked at, well, he wasn't really giving personalized attention. It was all like, it was like a factory. It was like, it was a bunch of stations. And again, his thing, I thought it was effective. It was, it was helping kids, but it wasn't helping kids at the level that I could see and I, I could visualize. And so I just came in, offered something that was more attention-based. So automatically my thing was different because of that, right? So you could see, I started to specialize. And slowly but surely, kids from that program started coming to my program. And it's because the parents wanted something that gave their kids more attention. So I found that gap and I exploited that. And then I went after it. And it was funny, I will never forget this. I've never said this on YouTube. I had a eval session with, uh, a kid that was in his program and it was so hilarious i remember <laughs> that uh this kid showed up and he was wearing that guy's shirt to my session and i in my head i was laughing because i was like oh man this is kind of weird because like this kid's with me now uh and then i was like man i don't want him to be wearing that shirt with me because like now he's representing this other guy's program <laughs> and so once that kid signed up, I was like, hey, you can't wear that shirt here anymore. You're, you're with me. And, uh, <laughs> and it was funny, though, because I started to close the gap on what he was doing by offering something different. And I became a specialist. And I will tell you, like, when back in the heyday of when I was running that at the highest level, I would get so many like text and phone calls and, and, and messages on Instagram or sorry, uh, Facebook because of the reputation that we built and because of, of the results that we we're getting. And it would be just so much, so many referrals at that point because I specialized, I, I was not doing 10 different things. I was doing one thing. I was doing it really well. Right. Two years later, that guy went out of business. And I'm not happy about that. I, I like that sucks for the dude, but I can tell you if I didn't come in and do that at that time, like he would have just continued to gain market share, and then he probably would have realized, oh, I need to add this thing too. And because I did it before him, right? That took a lot of the kids from what he was doing into what I was doing. Like I, I've trained hundreds of kids that have worked with them. Like, and I'm not kidding. That's a real number, hundreds. Because those parents were unsatisfied with the product. Okay, so I hope you can see that. Next, it is being the CEO, working on the business and not in it. And there's a difference between like being the person in the business all the time and working on it. All right, and when you work on it, you have either a small team or you have people in place that are doing certain things that are driving revenue for the business and or they are fulfilling the sessions okay now i know i spend a lot more time on this slide here i will tell you if you're if you've watched this video we're on an hour at this point if you're watching this video and you're like dude i need help like i will tell you all the stuff that i'm showing you here these are things i've already experienced i've already experienced helping other coaches with and I know I can help you with if you're a committed person, all right? If you're committed and you love coaching and you're like, man, I want to really grow my business, all right? Then what you'll see is like right below this video in the first link, I have an application. You can apply to join our program, all right? And at this point, I've worked with coaches that are either just starting and they're, they're getting their first clients I've worked with people that are making over $500,000 per year, right? And I will tell you, the biggest difference that I wanted to, or the biggest thing I want to try to show you in this video, it's at the top of this page where it says, becoming a long-term thinker, right? If you truly think long-term, you, you will be successful in this business. And it's the short-term thinkers it's the ones who are in it for just quick dollar. Those are the people who never succeed. But it's like that. Like, and you may know people who are like that, where every three months they have a new business or they have a new idea. Like, they're not thinking about 
the future with that idea. They're thinking, well, it's not working right now, so I'm just going to quit. And that happens all the time. Coaches try to start a business, they quit because they're not either A, uh, thinking long term, or B, they're, they're just sitting on their hands. They're not doing anything. All right. And last thing I'm going to tell you is to notice there's one thing I left off, on, off this list. All right. And it's SMSS. And I call that coaches that want to be a social media superstar. All right. I have a spreadsheet right now and I'm not going to pull it up because like, I'm not going to expose these people. But I have a spreadsheet of people that I talk to that have between like 10K followers on Instagram to like 500K followers. These guys are not successful. Like I, <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. They're not as successful as you think and you need to stop trying to copy what they do because what they do often is not working and they look really successful. But here's the facts. I could go down to the, like I know where the Ferrari dealership is. It's about 30 minutes from where I live. I could go down there tomorrow and have my wife take a picture of me standing next to a red Ferrari and post that to Instagram. That's gonna get a bunch of likes. And I could just lie and say, hey guys, look at this new whip that I just bought. <laughs> right? I would never say something like that, by the way. Uh, but I see crap like this all the time on Instagram. And a bunch of people would like it, but that's just what that does is that just gets in people's heads. Like, oh, I want that. I, I want that. What, what's been driving? That looks cool. That is that what success looks like? No, that's not what success looks like. Um, if if you're trying to be popular and be liked on social media, like you're not in it for the long term. Like I can tell you, it, and you got to ask yourself this question: Would I rather be successful and <clears throat> have income, or do I need to be liked and and have like high status amongst my peers in the sport? All right. Now that doesn't mean social media is bad. I just think if you change your outlook on social media and you use it as how can I get clients from this thing, not how can I get these coaches that live across the other, across the ocean to like my stuff or to like my post. Like, and that's why I left that off the list because people that think long term, like sure, they, they will have social media, but they're using it to get clients. They're not, they're not trying to be the social media superstar. All right. And I will tell you, I've been around this game probably longer than you have if you're watching this video. And I've been around this game more th longer than any other like standing business coach that's within sports because uh, I've been doing this for a long time. And, you know, too many people focus on that, on the social media stuff. And they're not they're not getting the best results, which is why you need it. You need to look at this thing. All right, this is a tool that can help you grow your business. And if you're not using it as a tool to grow your business, you shouldn't be using it at all. And that's, that's all I got. So this is the longest video I've ever posted on YouTube. <laughs> and just wanna say thank you for watching this because I know if you watch this, I would think you're probably really serious about growing your business. And I'm gonna invite you to apply to my program because we deal with coaches that have these issues every single day during the week. And our goal is to fix these problems so you have a better, more stabilized business with the right foundation to grow and scale for the future. And uh, I'm excited to chat with you. If you apply, just go to the first link in the description. Go check that out. And I look forward to talking to you. And I hope this brought a lot of value to you and your business. All right. See you later.